in the previous two lecture videos, we have looked at the HOS model or the Heckscher Olin Samuelson model. The HOS model or the theorem tells us that a capital abundant country will export the capital intensive good and import the labor intensive good. So we have looked at this from a theoretical perspective and we know that HOS model makes logical as well as intuitive sense. Now let us see how well the HOS theorem explains real world trade patterns or in other words let us look at the empirical testing of the HOS model. The first major work in this area was done by a Nobel Prize winning economist by the name of Wasley Lientier and what he did is he used 1947 data constructed an input output table for the US and and this study he did in 1951 and since he did this for the US based on HOS model this is what we would predict and that is since US was the most capital abundant country in the world we would expect US to be exporting capital intensive products and importing labor intensive products. And when he conducted this study, what he found is exactly the opposite of what HOS model would predict for the US. And, and hence, this study led to what is called now the Leon TF paradox. So this study was done in 1951. And this led to a lot of active research amongst international trade economists for next three or four decades. And what these economists wanted to figure out is the following. The HOS model is very logical and makes intuitive sense. But how come the study that was done by Leon Tief did not explain foreign trade based on the HOS model? And this, so a lot of effort was made in order to resolve the Leon Tief paradox. Now, Leon Tief repeated this exercise for 1951 data as well and again found the same result. That is, US was exporting labor intensive products and importing capital intensive product, though US happened to be the most capital abundant country in the world. The first attempt to resolve the Leontief paradox came from Leontief himself and according to him the US labor it was thrice as productive as a foreign worker in 1947 and if this is true the Leontief paradox gets resolved but what other economists found is it was not just labor but also capital was more productive in the US relative to rest of the world and hence this could not resolve the Leontief paradox. Another attempt was made where people thought that the US tastes were biased in favor of capital intensive good and hence if the tastes are biased in favor of capital intensive good that means capital intensive goods become relatively more expensive in the US and labor intensive goods become less expensive in the US and this could possibly resolve the Leontief paradox but this effort coming from the demand side or in terms of taste and preferences an economist by the name of Hauthacker he examined tastes and preferences across countries and he found them to be very similar across nations so US was no different from rest of the world and hence this argument also did not fly. Another argument or another attempt was as follows. Now Leontief basically focused on two factor model that is labor and capital. And if we include the third resource called natural resources, then importables are likely to be capital intensive. Why? Because <clears throat> 
if you look at how crude oil is brought up, it's using capital intensive technology. And since US was a major importer of natural resources, these are produced using capital intensive technology. And hence, if you include the third factor, natural resources, chances are this would explain as to why we have Leontief paradox when we just use two factor model. Crevice in 1954 found that the labor intensive industries in the US were most severely protected against foreign competition or against imports. Now, if we do not permit imports of say labor intensive commodities as per HOS theorem, in such a case, the trade pattern is bound to be biased and this in a way could explain the Leontief paradox. Another interesting argument that was put forth is based on factor intensity reversal or FIR in short. What FIR means or factor intensity reversal means is the same product is produced using labor intensive technology in the labor abundant country and the same product is produced using capital intensive technology in the capital abundant country. For example, the two countries we have examined is US and India. India is labor abundant, so the same commodity may be produced using labor intensive technology in India. What about the US? US is capital abundant, and so the same commodity could be produced using capital intensive technology in the US, which happens to be a capital abundant country. Now, if FIR or factor intensity reversal is true or is very prevalent, in such a case, the HOS model completely breaks down. And hence, this would explain why do we have Leontief's paradox. Now, an economist by the name of Minas in 1962 found that FIR is pretty prevalent. In fact, what he found is FIR to be present in 33% of the cases that he looked at. But then Leontief looked at or analyzed Minhas's estimation technique and he corrected for an important bias in Minhas' study and found that FIR is a very rare phenomena and hence this argument also does not hold true. A significant contribution in terms of resolving the Leontief paradox came through the examination of another variable called human capital. Now, when you look at it, what Leontief had done was he treated all workers the same, machines the same, so counting was easy. But what he ignored is a very important component called human capital. And human capital essentially means the skills, the technical knowledge, the health, etc., of the workers. And US seemed to have a comparative advantage or a relative more abundance of this factor called human capital. And so a number of economists by the name of Kravis, 1956, Kiesing, 1966, Kennan, 1965, and Baldwin, what they did is they attempted to include human capital. There are issues involving the measurement of human capital, but they incorporated that into the Leontief paradox. And when you introduce human capital, the Leontief paradox is resolved for the US and some other countries, though not for all countries. So what we have found is, if we move from a two-factor model to maybe a three-factor model, or maybe include even more factors, chances are we are likely to find the predictions of HOS model to be correct or close to reality. So let us look at some numbers in the next two slides. In 1980s, Motti and Morici, what they looked at are several factors of production in 1980. So here we have physical capital, research and development scientists, skilled workers, semi-skilled workers, unskilled workers, and arable or cultivable land. 
And what they did is they compared six industrial countries to rest of the world. And here you can see uh, where is, lies the factor abundance for industrial or rich countries. It's in physical capital, research and development scientists, skilled workers, semi-skilled workers partly, but not in unskilled workers and cultivable or arable land. Then Mati and Marichi, they went ahead and calculated export-import ratios for the US and Germany and for other countries too, but we are just looking at US and Germany. And they classified foreign trade in terms of whether the product is technology intensive or is a part of services or is it standardized or is it labor intensive or primary product based. Primary means agriculture, mining and so on. And if this ratio happens to be greater than one, it simply means that this country is exporting more relative to what it is importing. And as you can see in technology intensive products, US and Germany both have a comparative advantage because of factor endowments and hence they will be exporting more of these products relative to what they're importing. In the case of services in 1979, the export import ratio for the US was greater than what it was for Germany. It was less than one for Germany. As far as standardized products go, th these are products that you can get from other countries. And here you find these two countries were importing more than what they were exporting. And the same thing applies to labor intensive products and primary products. So what these tables tell you is if you move from two factor model to a larger factors model, and then you classify products according to how they are produced, whether they are technology intensive or whether they are standardized, labor intensive and so on. And what you find is broadly these ratios conform to what we would expect HOS to predict for us. So this in a way concludes our discussion of HOS model. You will recall that in the HOS model, what they had assumed is that factors of production are perfectly mobile across sectors within a country. And several economists criticize the fact that whatever machines we use in the food industry, the same machine cannot be used in the clothing industry. And to address this problem, an economist by the name of Ron Jones came up with what is called a specific factors model. And he assumed that two goods that are being produced by this country, clothing and food. And he assumed that labor is perfectly mobile between sectors. However, capital is specific to a sector or is completely immobile between sectors. So whatever machines you require to produce food can only produce food and whatever machines you require to produce clothing will only be, can be used for producing clothing. Further, he assumed that food is produced using labor intensive technology and clothing is produced using capital intensive technology. And this country is labor abundant. Now, based on all that we know, we know this country will have a comparative advantage in production of food because it's labor abundant and food is produced using labor intensive technology. So this country will export food. Now what will happen to rewards to different factors? Now when there's an increase in production of food, the demand for machines and workers in the food industry will go up. And hence, this will cause an increase in reward to capital in the export sector, which is the food industry for this country, and a decrease in reward to capital in the import competing sector, which is the clothing sector for this country. And as far as wages are concerned, it's very hard to predict what will happen, whether they'll increase or decrease. So this completes our discussion of HOS model and an extension thereof. Thank you for your time.